got involved, along with civil rights activist Joseph Lee, to lower her monthly payments and from the Army because of her need. Here's a rundown of some of the stories we're working on next. How Occupy Atlanta helped save a Georgia woman's home from foreclosure. Then after a surge in the polls, Newt Gingrich no longer in the lead. Later, you know the saying, age, nothing but a number? Well, 106-year-old stockbroker definitely proving that. This Iraq War veteran, wounded by mortar rounds, was forced to retire from the Army because of her injuries. Bridget Walker lost half of her income when that happened. And after 22 years in the Army, she could no longer afford the payments on her Atlanta home. So she asked her bank, Chase, to lower her monthly payments and was rejected. Her home was going to be auctioned off on January 3rd. So Walker reached out for help. Occupy Atlanta got involved, along with civil rights activist Joseph Lowry. Just a couple days ago, her bank lowered her payments by more than half. We reached out to Chase and they told us, uh, quote, we're very pleased we could help a military veteran who has sacrificed for our country. Well, before Walker's loan was modified, she was among two million homeowners being foreclosed on right now here in this country. Another six million homeowners are 30 or more days delinquent on their payments. I want to bring in Bridget Walker, who joins us now. And first of all, it's such a pleasure to meet you. Uh, nice to meet congratulations. You too. Thank I know you. that uh, it was a pretty tough situation for you. Uh, what does it mean for you now on the holiday that you're not going to be kicked out of your home, which was just weeks away? It's a blessing. Uh, I'm, I'm happy. I'm overjoyed. I'm excited. Um, instead of trying to plan to move now we can actually plan for Christmas that's nice yes. uh, how did this come about I mean you lost your half of your income you went to the bank what was their response they were telling me that um, to submit certain type of documentation and it was a c continuous cycle of submitting documents um, and denial stating that I need to ha have uh, more income um, because my expenses were too great or my income wasn't enough and um, it was just a continuous cycle of trying to get some help so I could breathe I understand. with my hardship. I understand in trying to breathe, you had to sell a lot of stuff, you had to give up a lot of stuff. What did you do to try to make those payments? Um, I had three vehicles. I scaled down to one. Um, I was very uh, tight on every dollar that I spent. Um, I had a little savings um, before I was medically retired, so that kind of carried me a little bit. But um, from making good money in the military and then going down to below half, my income was at half, but my expenses and bills were still at, at the level of making good money from being on active duty. At, at what point did you feel desperate enough to seek out help outside of what you were doing? Well, actually, I was watching TV and I saw the story of the 103-year-old lady. And um, I pulled the article up online, found uh, Senator Fort's contact information, sent him an email detailing um, my hardship, what I was going through. And within two hours of that, he, he called me. Wow. And so they got involved. Do you know if there was anything that they did uh, that, that changed the bank's mind here that you were not able to do? Do you know how it actually came about that they were, were able to get your, this renegotiated for you? Yes. Uh, they got everyday common people like us involved. Uh, they got the story out because a lot of people are going through the same thing that I'm going through, but you wouldn't know. Um, so in that and in, in doing what they do as Occupy Atlanta, um, everything came together and it was a win for everybody. What would you, what kind of advice would you give people who might be watching? You say you watched the story about the 103-year-old lady. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, people are watching now. They're watching you and they're watching what happened with you. What what do people need to know to do if they're in a desperate situation? They're going to lose their home. Hey, um, don't be afraid to let someone know your struggles. Um, before anyone can help you, you have to voice your, your, your struggles and let them know what's going on. Um, a lot of us have that fear of people uh, having these uh, bad uh, thoughts about us or we shouldn't get this because we can't afford it or so on and so forth but that's not the case as a human being we face daily hardships and some of those hardships can cost us to lose our homes this is something that we don't want to lose and it's affecting a lot of families across America so just just voice just let somebody know what you're going through 
and it'll spread like Wi-Fi. People will be willing to help you out. We appreciate <laughs> you letting us know what's going on in your life. And again, I'm um, so glad that it all worked out for you too mm -hmm. as well. Thank you. And I want to thank everybody. And uh, I just appreciate all the support. And this is not only a win for me, but this is a win for everybody who's in my situation. All right, Bridget, thank you. Bridget Walker. Thank you for having me. We did some research, found out what you can do if you're not able to get your loan modified and are about to lose your home. We want to go to this website here. It is the Institute for Foreclosure and Legal Assistance. That is www.foreclosurelegalassistance.org. Well, he's been following the action on Wall Street.